Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about Svelte, what it is and why it's interesting to learn. Actually, no, more precisely, why it's revolutionary, because Svelte is a paradigm shift. The best way to learn is to do. When I'm learning, I look at examples and I tinker about. But doing that with Svelte was a massive failure. I didn't understand how the state worked. I didn't understand how the application updated itself. And so I dove into the documentation. It specifies that Svelte doesn't use a virtual DOM, but is a UI framework that compiles component into basic JavaScript, unlike React, Vue, or Angular, which embed the framework in the page. But what does that mean in practice? It took me a while to understand the principles of the framework. I was looking for how the application state was defined, but there's no equivalent to set state. Svelte just uses basic JavaScript, as you can see in this example. How do you tell Svelte where the state is, what is part of the state? Mentally, I was stuck. I didn't understand what was going on. The tagline of Svelte 2 was truthful when it stated that Svelte is a magically disappearing UI framework. But while I was searching, I came across a video made by Rich Harris, the creator of Svelte, and then I understood. When the documentation stated that Svelte compiles components, it was pointing the way, it was telling me what the truth was. Truth be told, Svelte isn't first and foremost a framework, not in the way Angular or Vue are. Svelte is a compiler, and this compiler cheats, or rather it creates an illusion. Saying that it was magical was a good choice of words, because like a magician, Svelte kind of misleads us. It makes us believe we're coding in JavaScript. And that's not quite true. So what's the nature of this illusion? Svelte kind of cheats. It overloads the equals operator by adding an edge effect to it. That side effect updates all the places where the variable is used. It finds in the HTML a build time where there are dependencies on this variable, and it plugs itself into it. And this is where the absence of virtual DOM comes into play. To better understand, let's compare this with React. React keeps a copy of the component tree memory, and this is what we call the virtual DOM. At each frame of rendering, React compares the parameter of each node in the component tree one by one. If a parameter is changed, React refreshes the rendering of that node and all the nodes that depend on it. But this one-to-one -one comparison across the entire component tree is computationally expensive. Svelte, on the other hand, tracks value dependencies directly by overloading the equals assignment operator and all its variations. It's precisely the equal in let counter equals one that defines the state. Now Svelte goes even further by also overloading this notion of a label to create dependencies. Let's have a look at this example. The name of the label, the dollar, is reminiscent of the observable notion. Here we define first name as world, then we define greeting. In the label, we assign hello plus first name to greeting. Finally, we assign the value of Bob to first name. And here, Svelte displays hello Bob. But the label, the line with the dollar sign, is before we assign Bob to first name. If we were dealing with pure JavaScript, which we would execute in order, greeting would be worth hello world. Everything happens as if with the label, the dollar, the link between greeting and first name is durable, as if we had created a dependency. And if we add in a log, we can see this clearly. When we reach the log, greeting is set to undefined. So the code in the label hasn't yet been called. Now let's explore this in more detail. The label notation can include a block. So let's put a log in there too. The console says undefined and then hello Bob. This makes sense. We can define multiple blocks with labels. Here, in this code, you'd expect that the label blocks would be executed in the order that they are defined in. But no, not at all. In the console, we can see three, then two, then one. Svelte has detected a dependency graph. Block two depends on first name and updates the greeting variable. Block one depends on greeting and is therefore executed after two. And now, as I have a twisted mind, I immediately tried to create a cyclic dependency. But the compiler detects this and through an error. It's perfect, there are safeguards. I find that this illusion, this magic, I find it fascinating. The compiler simplifies the mental model enormously compared to what we have in React. At the same time, it's still an illusion. The compiler changes the way that JavaScript works. I love the way it works, which makes me want to use it. I hope you do too. Provided that you keep in mind that this 
operations, way of doing things, is specific to Svelte. That this is not how JavaScript works without the help of Svelte. Svelte brings superpowers to the code, but these powers imply great responsibilities. And in terms of responsibilities, yours is now to click the like button, and I'll see you in the next video.